See this old bitch on the end? That's my favourite chainsaw. That thing weighs 5 kilos, puts out 3.6 horsepower, does 14,000 RPM and 120 decibels. You can hear it from two full city blocks away. This bitch will cut a car in half and runs off the blood of old dead dinosaurs. This sitting next to it, this is still 180 MS. It puts out 2.8 horsepower, weighs 4 kilos, sits at 8,000 RPM and screams its little tits off at 112 decibels. And sitting on the end here, we have the AEG 18-volt battery-operated chainsaw. Come on, seriously? It's a fucking hedge trimmer. It is! It's a fucking hedge trimmer! Look at... G'day, g'day, my name's Jim, and today we're going to be checking out the AEG Brushless Chainsaw. The AEG Brushless Chainsaw has a 12-inch bar, retails for 329 Australian bum fucks at your local Bunnings hardware store. Rated 18-volt bar and chain and made by Oregon. Oiling tank has a capacity of 210 mils. It weighs 3.5 kilograms, and the usable cutting length is 250 millimetres. The no-load speed is 10 metres per second, though I have no way of confirming or denying this but it seems a little bit fast to me this is my apprentice slash offsider and we're going to be giving him a crack at this chainsaw because of the lightness of this saw and the fact it has a pretty aggressive chain it does jump around quite a lot if not seated in the dogs properly or if you're trying to cut super hard wood like uh, dried old gum or something like that being battery powered it's obviously extremely light compared to a petrol saw as well as it's basically made from 100 percent plastic it does feel fairly sturdy in the hand and that's probably half because it doesn't have any vibration mountings i would like to tell you the torque and the wattage and all that kind of bullshit but Unfortunately, the manufacturers have decided not to release that information, or at least not that I can find, anyhow. I think it's got heaps of balls. I haven't managed to stall the chain yet without pinching the bar first. I think the torque levels are probably up there with the MS-180, although obviously the chain moves at about one-tenth the speed. 4 amp battery will last you about 15-20 minutes, depending on how hard you're pushing it. It has a chain brake, though obviously it's just an on-off switch, but... I guess it does work. The safety start, which is located in a decent place on top of the handle, doesn't break your damn fingers every time you try and push it on. And it's not completely inconvenient to actually get it to switch. Now, according to my top, top secret insider that works at Bunnings, who I will never reveal the identity of under penalty of death, on your match, says that there's a full parts list available. Now, I haven't ordered such alleged parts, but old mate says they're there, so... I tend to trust him. Sound levels. Well, look, what can I say? It's uncomparable to a petrol saw, obviously. Look, if you woke up in the middle of the night and you heard this thing running, you probably think the wifey just got some new batteries, roll over and go back to sleep. Now, why would you want to buy a battery saw? A battery saw like this could be almost essential when camping. Many places I've been do, big signs up all over the place, no chainsaws. But if you've ever tried getting some firewood off a 50-year-old stump laying in a paddock with an axe, then you know what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm going to shut up for a sec so you can have a listen to it. Taking off the bar and tightening the chain is pretty simple. It's an older style lock system. Still and Husvana have spannerless bar lock technology, but that's just more shit to go wrong as far as I'm concerned. It has a little spanner hidden up here up its ass, right next to its steel ring, which I presume you're supposed to hang from your belt like some PNG linesman swinging off a telegraph pole out the back of Burke somewhere. Okay, now, well, look, I pissed in your pocket long enough. Let's give this thing a score, shall we? Lightness and portability, 8 out of 10. Roughness and toughness. Even though it's made out of plastic, this thing is pretty bloody tough. 
I've had it bouncing around in the back of the ute for weeks on end. I've had it in the back of the van. I've taken it out west into the bushfires last year, which burn out millions of kilometres, including my friend's farm. It's been in dust that's so fine, it's as fine as talcum powder. It's been in shit, piss, pouring down fucking rain, mud as far as the eye can see, and it's not broken, and it still runs, and it still bloody almost looks like new. So I'm going to give it a two. I'm joking. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. It's, uh, it's fucking tough. Now, usability, I want to break this into two parts. Part one, getting the job done. It's actually really good. I'm, I'm very impressed. The amount of power this thing has compared to how light it is. Every time I'm holding it in my hand, it just feels like a child's toy I should have had when I was young, except I was deprived. Second part, usability. If you've never used a chainsaw before and you've decided to go and buy this thing and unbox it, can you charge it? Can you get it working? Can you go out and cut that bloody branch that's been banging the side of the house for the last two years that hubby's been saying he's going to get around to but never actually does? The answer is, I believe yes. I think a normal person that has no experience with anything could take this thing, take it out there and cut a branch out. So saying that, I'm going to give the usability a 9. Now, here's the ambit. So, would I recommend this saw? No, I wouldn't. No, I'm not joking. It's too fucking dear. If you decided this afternoon to race off to Bunnings and buy yourself this saw and you have no other AEG products, it's going to cost you 430 bucks. $430. To put that in reference, this big-ass saw of mine, my favourite, that's what I paid for the 026 second hand. And the 180, you can buy that brand new. You can walk into a still dealership and you can buy an MS 180 straight off the floor for 430 bucks. If they put the price down on this thing, I'd be happy to recommend it. But at the moment, it's just too ridiculously dear. All right, peoples, well, that's it for me. I hope you liked the video. And if you did, you know what to do. And if you didn't, you know what to do. <laughs> you all be good and stay safe. And we'll see you round like a wristle, trendsetters. Everything I say in my videos is my own opinions and might not reflect the view of anybody else, including those who host my content. The manufacturers, wholesale, retailers have no idea who the fuck I am and have not asked me to review any of their products. I bought this with my own money and no prior knowledge to anybody else. I don't get any discounts, freebies, hand jobs, backhanders, circle jerks, or any reach-arounds. My opinions may differ from yours. The hookers were harmed in the making of this video.